the, the first version we have right now will power a 10,000 watt generator and it'll run four and a half hours full throttle at, uh, with the 10,000 watt generator. So if you use a small generator, it could run longer, but, um, That's and you just keep adding, all you do is keep adding more mass to it after four hours, come in and go send the kid out. Hey, go fuel the machine. <laughs> the kid out. That's right. That's right. faith, family and freedom. That's right. The Absolutely. family fuels the freedom. That's right. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, and we're starting to see more and more signs that the Biden administration recognizes that they're going to get crushed by Trump come November. Uh, let's just say that they're trying to uh, they're becoming more and more desperate in terms of what they're trying to sneak in here before getting booted, booted out of office. For example, did you know that at the end of 2023, December 13th, to be exact, Biden signed a pledge at the U.N. Climate Summit, what's called the COP28, that effectively states that those signatories must lead their countries away from using any and all fossil fuels. So this fossil fuel eradication pledge was never debated. It was never discussed. It was never voted on. But our wealthy jet-setting elite at the U.N., Want you to never use gasoline or natural gas ever again. And yet, of course, as we saw with all their Christmas photos, you know, from our ruling establishment, all their houses have what in their kitchen? <laughs> well, of course, a gas stove, right? Now, this is the opposite of what Trump did. He recognized that natural gas is hugely important for our self-sufficiency, our energy independence, as well as our, our dominance. Remember how Trump made America unreliant on any other country when it came to our energy needs. And we even became at one point the top energy exporter in the world. That's what's different about the American, the spirit that we've all inherited. We fight back against the tyranny of government, whether it's elected or not. So what does this mean for all of us? What can we do about the fossil fuel eradication pledge the Biden administration is trying to sneak in here? Well, gang, this is precisely what makes the building of a parallel economy just so incredibly exciting, because today I'm joined by my friend, Francisco Guerra, who's made it his life's mission ever since migrating here from Cuba to create tools that will protect our freedoms and our independence. Francisco is a prolific entrepreneur, so much so that Time magazine has actually ranked one of his inventions as one of the best inventions of the year. But best of all, Francisco is one of us. He's a patriot and he's an avid defender of faith, family, and freedom. So Francisco, welcome. I'm, I have been, I was so excited. I got up today. I was so excited to talk to you. It's such an honor to have you here, man. Oh, thank you. I'm a, I'm a big follower and uh, we all stand together in our fight. So yeah, it's exciting. It is. It is. And you, you, you make that fight all the more invigorating by your, 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 your inventive imagination that you put into practice. It's so amazing. I mean, what do you, what do you make of this move away from fossil fuels? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, could it actually happen? No, it's crazy. There's just no way we don't have the ability to just to feed stock, you know, and, and how are they going to do it? I mean, it's interesting, but I've started to move in that direction because I knew it was coming Right. You know, 20 years ago, funny story happens is when Obama got elected, I freaked out and said, you know what? I'm going to move to Panama. I'm going to buy an island. A couple of my friends did it. But when I went out to, to the islands, I realized these islands are pretty well. They're not that big. But second, putting solar panels wasn't a great idea. So I said, hey, there's a lot of biomass. There's hmm. a lot of wood. There's uh, coconuts that come up, you know, come up on the shore. So. I said to these guys, all these guys had these islands and they're all buying diesel and putting diesel in these 55 gallon drums, bringing it to their house and putting it in a generator. I'm going, that's so, you have so much biomass. So have you guys ever heard of a thing called a sin gas generator? And they're like, eh. So I said, well, here, it's real simple. You know, in World War II, there was no fuel in Europe, zero, zero fuel in Europe. So what did people do? They converted their, their carburetor engine to run off of sin gas. And what sin gas is, it's really interesting. Sin gas is the other gases. When you burn a piece of wood, no matter what it is, if you're looking at it while you're burning it, you can see there's different colors in it. Those other colors are gases that are being released that don't burn yet because they're released. So they didn't get ca they didn't catch get caught into the ignition period. So what I did is I mean, well, I didn't do it. I mean, this was science. I mean, it, it was a, a publication where I found it was in a publication by the. Uh, 
the Army Corps of Engineers put out something in case of famine and no electricity and no fuel, but no one ever took it seriously. So what I did is I went ahead and made it into a household version. I did it for me first, but while I was in Panama looking for an island, I kept telling these guys, yes, my bio mass generator, you know, sin gas. No, no. So you just hook it up to your generator. What? What do you mean? Yeah, you plug the gas that comes out of this into the carburetor and you fill it with biomass. So this is pellets. So these are like, looks like rabbit food. They're just pellets. I mean, just little pellets. You can make this. I made this out of grass shavings in my house. So I collect it. I put it in a 55 gallon drum. Then I bought this $159 pelletizer. They do it to make rabbit food and it makes pellets. All I use, I fill my hopper in my syngas generator and it runs for about six hours. And it, you know, so it costs me nothing. I also can put wood chunks in it. I can also put, you know, uh, carbon. So this is a little funny. I take pallets that people throw away. We cut them up and we charcoal them. We turn them into this. And then this becomes a great biomass. So it's got a hopper. It's really interesting, but we, we started, we knew that it was coming. Right. We knew that, um, I have always known that they're going to increase the price. In, and this is what they're going to do is it's electricity is what's going to get expensive. It's going to get out of hand. Right. So some cases it's cheaper to run a generator if your fuel doesn't cost you anything. Right. Wow. So that's how the syngas generator started for us. And we've, we've perfected it. We, we know tough times are going to come. Um, we know there are the, the, how are they in the next couple of years, how are they going to handle the electrical draw for all electric cars? If they're really going to do that. I right. mean, you know, I, I'm curious, what, when was that article written that you came across that inspired this idea uh, that you said you, you came across an article that talked about its use? No, you know, War. you know what it was is I know about Syngas mm -hmm. um, and well, how I know about it is years ago, I developed a little uh, contraption that makes hydrogen and what this machine does is it takes water it hydrolyzes the water but i also could take a little straw from here and run a little motor with it so for two minutes three minutes technically it will bubble like that then at the end of two minutes i will drink it it's delicious it <laughs> super hydrolates my it goes right into my system anyways i'm an expert with hydrogen so hydrogen is you know, free basically means uses low voltage. Um, so, you know, so it was, so it was that, that research for that. And right. then it's something that I knew that look, you, a turbo, how a turbo works in a car is it takes the exhaust and runs it back into the car. Yeah. So, and again, you know, we could be self-sufficient. Every home in America could be, I'll give you an example. I am totally off the grid. I have solar panels on the roof of my house with a Tesla battery that, I, you know, I'm off the grid. I mean, you can, I have my own well. Wow. We have a foot of snow outside my home right now. It's iced over. You can't leave unless you've got heavy equipment right. or a big truck. Right. Um, so no problem. Everybody's out of water. Everybody, you know, there's, there's ice storm coming and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't affect me because I have the basic necessities and I have a sin gas generator standing by. I love it. I mean, you, you're literally creating the fuel of the parallel, the literal fuel of the parallel economy. I mean, and you're living it out yourself. It's, it's wonderful. I, I was going to ask because um, one of the other areas of the parallel economy that's uh, growing is a classical education, um, not just in the actual uh, K to 12 schooling, um, proper schooling or uh, formal schooling, but also in homeschooling as well. And it was in part inspired by Doug Wilson, after he came across an older article, I think it was written back in the 1940s. That's just kind of what inspired me about that. Wait a minute now. S similar things going on about how we used to do education, how we used to educate yes. virtue and wisdom with the great books, with theology as the queen of the sciences and all that. He started bringing that back, back in the early 80s. There were only a couple of classical schools at that time. Today, now there's, I believe, we're getting close to about a thousand. I mean, it's just it's just exploded all over the country. So it's, I, you guys are all tapping into the same, I think, creative energies of wait a minute, you know, we know how to do this. We, we, we did just it. Have to tap we, into it. Yeah. We, look, look at, I mean, Tesla's technology for free energy. I mean, it's been designed. We know it works. They just, you know, who's going to be the first one to do it? Right. You know, right. Um, 
That's why I made these home versions and I'm coming out with something else. You want to hear my latest new thing? I, this, is why, this is why I was so excited to tell you. I mean, you, you're like Willy Wonka. Go. I am. You know, if you ever get a chance to come see my factory, it, it's 45,000 square feet of technologies that we're developing for retail. I used to be the largest retailer for home shopping network, providing them houseware products, kitchen products. That fueled me the revenue to develop new things wow. that we put out. So we got hundreds of products, but my main business is special effects. I'm in every movie set and every theme park in the world. But, you know, so we have, I've got these resources. I've got a lab, I've got engineers, I've got a machine shop. We can develop all kinds of things. And that fuels me to do my, uh, I call it my uh, inventing for humanity. But, uh, we, one of our, uh, I live half my time in Puerto Rico because of a tax program until this year. Now I'm here all the time because it's so much, so busy here. They have such a huge plastic problem. We now know that in our cells, we have what's called microplastic. It means that there's so much plastic that it gets into our cell level, that small plastic. We don't know what to do with it. So I know that a simple science project that I tried is I know if you take plastic, like plastic bottles, which is my biggest concern, what do we do with so many plastic bottles? But what if I told you, you can take all the plastic that you use at home and if you put it into this little device I've developed, very simple, and you pack it in with all the plastic, say once a month, you have 40 pounds of plastic. What would be neat? Wouldn't it be neat if at the, you turn this thing on and 40 minutes later, out comes diesel, clear diesel. And that's what we're working on. That's 2024 is we're releasing a product that anybody can have at home. Uh, it uses heat. So the syngas generator could be used to give the heat to run. But basically when you cook plastic, most people don't know yeah. this, it yeah. goes back to its natural form, uh -huh. which is, it's actually, it's kerosene diesel. It's in the middle. So I'm going to figure out what to do with all the plastic, you know, around my area. Um, right. our, our local town in Lexington doesn't recycle its plastic. They throw it in the landfill. I'm going to take all their plastic and start cooking it and using it to power their dump, their, um, garbage trucks because wow. it'll cost them nothing. And, but also I could generate my own reactor. <laughs> I could power my community. This is so TVA, amazing. Listen, my, where I live, TVA doesn't like, you know, they're, they're on the fence there, you know. Right. They don't right. like the fact that I can generate. They don't even buy back my electricity. I overproduce. That's hilarious. That is, how did, Francisco, how did you get, what inspired you uh, to, to create inventions that, Again, the theme that I'm getting from from all your work is you you're about protecting the American people from these just these real tyrannical threats. What inspired you to do this? Well, come, being born into a communist country and then coming to the greatest country on the planet and been given the privilege to bring products to market and understanding the free trade. You know, so I've just brought my products out, you know, and, and I found audiences. Now the internet became my biggest, you know, uh, audience. I mean, I, you know, before I was, I, you know, when I was a kid, I was a magician. And the problem was I used to invent magic tricks for the magicians. I did for Copperfield and all the top guys and Chris Angel. And, but there's not that many of them. So I said, I got to start making retail toys. So I started making toys because as a magician, you kind of make small gadgets and toys were easy. And then I worked for Hasbro. And then they showed up one day at Hasbro's office and said, here's something I made. And they took, they looked at it and they took my guts and they developed uh, the Furby. That was one of my first inventions. No way. And years later, I developed the electron, the, the inside components to Tickle Me Elmo. Which oh really, my. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I did write a book on, on my past. It's a pretty good little book and I'll, I'll give it to your audience if they want it. I'll, uh, I'll send you a link so they can download. Oh, that'd be free. wonderful. Absolutely. It's not what that, so what I learned early on, I said, what do the wealthiest people in America do? Well, they own trademarks, copyrights, and patents. Mm -hmm. So I started to file my own patents on my own ideas. And that really got me going in the inventing world. And I learned how to invent something and protect it. And I fought along some of the top companies in the world and won every time. I've never been defeated against a challenge. Wow. And then I started helping other inventors just like me that didn't have the resources, but I had the engine because I had started my organization. I've got an organization that's 35 years old, you know, it's, that's got dedicated people that know what my mission is. And remember, Mission Simple is what's best for America. So I was one of the first in China to making products. I know, I'm sorry, but I'm the first to leave. I have brought my molds back and I'm encouraging everybody. Crazy story. Here's something crazy. Yeah. Six months ago, my plant manager in China, 
who's been with me for a long time, calls me because I just got a notice from uh, immigration to come be here tomorrow at four o'clock. He gets there and there's a long line of plant managers that are American running American plants over there. And they got him on a room. They said, your visa has been revoked. You have 90 days to get your stuff and go. Huh. The, the point is they're kicking us out. Yeah. That's it. That's all wow. she wrote. Wow. So I'm moving on. I've been moving it for a long time. The problem is there's some, we have technologies over there that the only place to make certain parts and pieces. The good news is all of us that are in the same spot have already been moving the technology back. We're, we're moving our semiconductor machines back here. Problem is we taught them how to make our stuff. Now right. we need to learn how to mm -hmm. make it here. But we're I'm telling you, go ahead and upset an American. We'll figure out a way to to do it. And that's what. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so there's there's thousands of me. I mean, they're, they're literally I thousands of me. You know, the, the American entrepreneur is the strongest entrepreneur in the world. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Did I did I read that you um, that you you actually got into trouble um, by helping some churches? So, you know, um, years ago, um, I started, uh, I bought a, bought a bunch of rental property, like hundreds of rental units. And I had, a, and I had to um, figure out a way to process their payments because back then they were just doing checks, they mail you checks. So I developed a software that actually let me scan the checks quickly. Well, before you know it, I was a pretty big processor, a check processor. Banks don't want to process checks anymore. So I started to do this. So it gave me the ability to be an interesting banking middle. Well, when Trump went out, all of a sudden, the the organizations I supported that were out there financially supported me. We gave you know donations. We helped them make sure they had money and revenue. I did a lot of their marketing in the background because we we monetized mailing lists. Their credit card processing shut off. Wow! Not one, but hundreds. Yeah. And you know yeah. what they were? If they had anything to do with giving money to the good guys. Yeah. They were shut off. You know what I did? I turned them all on. I was, I, you know, there was nothing illegal about it. It's, they, they applied an app, they filled out an application. They were, they had everything ready to go. Two years after that, they came after me. Mm -hmm. Not only me, but everybody in my industry. But right. I was targeted because I did all the Christian organizations. Right. You know, look, halfway houses, missions that yeah. are overseas. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it has nothing it matter. to do. Yeah. Yep. You know, so anyways, no, I mean, yep. you're, you're, you're Christian. I mean, you saw they were, they were um, sending uh, feds in, into uh, traditional Catholic uh, churches. They were, they've ever since the war broke out in Ukraine, they've been looking at the Russian Orthodox churches here. I mean, they're just, they're, this they're brutal, sense. man. They're just brutal. They don't care. No, what, Look, what scared me is I saw the eyes of the enemy. Yeah. In a, in a, in a raging form that I don't understand because I'm as big as patriots you can get. You know, it's funny. You can, you know, I, if anybody said, hey, we're, we're, we want to know about these things. But instead, they sent every single part of the government to come talk to me. Not come talk yeah. to me. To yeah. raid my facilities. Yeah, intimidate. Mess yeah. with my clients. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, you know, lucky, the only thing I can tell you is the hand of God came through and stopped it. It's the only way I, it's, it's a miracle Amen. that they yeah. didn't push. But um, that's why I say now, here's the bad news is they've lit a fire under me that yeah. is unquenchable now. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to just keep developing things that are going to become a, a, an inexpensive way to do things in America that can bypass the channels they're trying to put in. Right. That's it. Yeah, I love it. And again, that's that spirit. It's just not something you can contain. They think they can do it. But in the end, they're only making it stronger. That's the beauty of it. Um, it's it, it, You bring up just working with the church. It just reminds me of just the the power of the cross, you know, because the cross is a symbol of love. The more you spit on it, the more you magnify the love. <laughs> you know, it's just, absolutely right. There's yeah. nothing you there's nothing you can do to stop the love. The, the, the symbol itself is love. And then the more you try to spit on it or like artists submerge it in a jar of urine and all this sort of stuff all you're doing is magnifying the glory of god's love and what they empowered me to this crazy level yeah. that i i said okay i've got the ability to see you can't censor my audience because i deal most of them with 
mailing lists, emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can censor me on, you know, in other places, as you know, you can censor me. So right, right. But not with email. So we're we're really, that's my, 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 my parallel economy is I'm bringing great products to Americans Direct that that revenue is fueling organizations like yours and others like that, that need, you know, are that need to be fueled to be able to be able to do the things they got to do. This, I mean, this is amazing stuff, uh, Francisco. And I, I could talk to you for hours uh, on this. Um, there's a link down below that people could check out. The Syngasifier. Can you give us just, I mean, I, I know there's a tutorial on there, but can you yeah. give, just give us, again, this is, this enables people to convert biomass basically into gasoline, correct? To be able to fuel their- Well, technically it turns it into a gas and that a gas, gas okay. you can cook with it. Right. You can heat with it. Right. But you can plug it in, you basically take it into the intake of the carburetor where the breather is. It just hooks up, it's all very nice to watch. And when you first turn it on, it just starts, it starts to run like a regular generator. And it's a little bit of a learning curve because it's different because you're using a gas, but you got to start the syngas generator, out comes the gas, and then you put it into the carburetor by just a, a valve, and then it starts producing regular electricity. Um, it's pretty cool. It smells like bar, like you're barbecuing because it uses. <laughs> it depends what you're, what you're, uh, you know, you're using. If you're using pellets or you're using right, right. charcoal, but um, under the worst possible conditions, you could survive anything because you could with heat. See, that's the one more thing. Why did this product not the bottle one first, meaning the uh, the plastics to uh, kerosene mm -hmm. is because you need to have heat. See, mm -hmm. if anything goes down, we got to have heat. Yeah. You got to have heat to cook food. You got to have heat yeah. to uh, distill water. You got to have heat to, or you got to have the gas to make a generator. So that's why I did that one. So we're ready to go. The, I even built a new facility for it. Um, it's, it's in our hometown in Lexington, Alabama, where I'm the largest employer in the community. And the reason everybody knows that this is where we're making stuff that's, you know, changing the world. These syngas generators are going overseas to third world countries that, you know, they have wow. so much biome. So just wow. think about it. You can, you can literally feed it just chunks of wood. And what you do is you put it in a, yeah, it's really how it works is it's got a big hopper. You fill it up the hopper on the bottom, you light it at the bottom, you close this little door and the flames are going up in this thing. Cause it's kind of got like a cage and a little fan turns on that sucks the fumes away from going up and out. And when it goes out, it comes out as a sin gas, which basically you just ignite and it just, it's clean burning by the way, totally clean. Wow. There's no, and, um, yeah. there's, you know, there's no, there's nothing toxic. It's, you know, you run it outside just cause it's got, it makes a little I was smoke. just going to ask. Yeah. So obviously it's outside, right? It's a gen yeah, like you would keep a generator outside. Right. It? Right. Right. But I made 20 of these which in the Obama era was how many years ago was that? 15 years ago? Yeah. So yeah. You, right? you, yeah. 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 Roughly. Yeah. No, 10, 10, 50. Yeah. yeah but 2012 yeah. was the second uh, term. So yeah. yeah to, that oh was yeah. So it's, yeah. Years. So yeah. I, and I built these and they're still running today. Wow. Cause there's no real moving parts. It's wow. basically hoppers. There is a, a little fan in there. The rest is all, it's all plumbing. It's really, well, so my point is it comes with a lifetime warranty because this thing is so well made. It's it comes on wheels. When you watch it, it's pretty cool. You, it's, you can keep it in your garage until you need it. Um, but what I like about it is if you have to boil water, you can boil water with it. Um, but run your generator at home. You know, you can buy, you know, a, an expensive generator and, and away you go. This unit will power the one. I'm, the, the first version we have right now will power a 10,000 watt generator. And it'll run four and a half hours full throttle at uh, with the 10,000 watt generator. So if you use a small generator, it could run longer. But um, That's and you just keep adding, all you do is keep adding more mass to it after four hours, come in and go right. send the kid out. Hey, go fuel the machine. <laughs> send the kid out. That's right. That's right. faith, family and freedom. That's right. The Absolutely. family fuels the freedom. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Gang, this is, I mean, this is what excites me so much about the rise of the parallel economy. This is amazing stuff. What I love so much about Francisco is he wants to help you foster self-sufficiency precisely yeah. to free you up to defend faith, family and freedom. He's amazing. So gang, whatever you do, uh, if you're looking to become more self-sufficient, I think every single person's audience should have one of these devices. They're absolutely unbelievable. If you want to be more self-sufficient, less reliant on the government and what they, the, the insanity they're dealing with here.
Uh, again, should be every single one of us. Make sure to click on the link below. Check out Francisco's amazing tool that enables you to make your own fuel. This is unbelievable right. stuff. I highly, gang, I could not recommend Francisco and his work more. He's an amazing inventor. Even Time Magazine has recognized it. Click on the link in the description below. Check it out. The Sin Gasifier. This is astonishing stuff. I mean, again, think of it as the literal fuel of the parallel economy. I mean, this is the ultimate is. ticket to independence. So click on the link in the description right now. Watch a video about this amazing product that helps you make your own fuel gang. This is what we're all about. Faith, family, and freedom, independence. Uh, I mean, Francisco, I mean, dude, I was just, when I looked at your stuff, I was like, this guy is amazing. You are everything that a parallel economy is all about. I mean, literally everything. I'm just, and the, one of the thoughts I had, uh, I'll just share with you is between you and Elon, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's we, amazing. We are he's good, amazing. man. We are good. We got some some pretty impressive minds and imaginations captaining this ship, and we're good. So, dude, from the bottom of my heart, thanks for all your oh, oh please, it's the American way. Yeah, well, and yeah, and thank God you you and your family. How old were you when you migrated over to the uh, United States? Crazy story. My parents immigrated. I went nine months old. My parents left Cuba and went to Spain. We lived there for four years till we got our visa here. So I came here at the age of five. And my dad worked really hard. My dad and my mom, they put us to school. And um, I knew right away, uh, you know, hey, come on, this, you know, everything's at your fingertips here compared to a communist country, you know, yeah. and yeah. yeah, five years old, you know, and the rest yeah. of the time. You know, well, it was so cool, too, because like during the DeSantis uh, 2022 campaign in, in Florida, it was really neat because everybody was talking about the Cuban-American population particularly in miami dade and they're like dude these guys are amazing they're so conservative and they're so entrepreneurial and there's this they're just so american and it was beautiful to I, we talked earlier i studied my uh, guitar teachers from cuba manuel barueco you know of them as well your guitar player and it is it's just beautiful to see this island in the caribbean that's unfortunately just had this this rough patch since what was it 1959 1960 yeah. and uh and just to see it can just its citizens come here and continue to flourish in a way they haven't would never be able to do uh, locked uh, under that regime. It's just a, it's just so beautiful and so heartwarming to see. And just God is so good to to give us the gift of your talent. So I appreciate it so much, Francisco. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm taking some to Cuba, by the way. I'm bringing some of sin gas. Oh, gas are you? Here. Are you? I was just going to ask if you've uh, yeah. if you've been well, back. I'm, I'm going, I've been a couple of years ago. I'm go, about to go in the next couple of months for an extended trip, but I'm going to bring a couple of gasifiers because they can reproduce them there. Yeah, um, yeah. They're starting to do some export, which is really funny. They're exporting tractors to the United States. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think it, I think it will eventually start, you know, the, the, the fire of freedom does eventually break out there. It, it, it will, it's just going to take some time, but obviously with your interaction, it'll happen all the, all the sooner. So yeah, keep Have us those. updated on that, Francisco. Yeah, that will. would be, we'd love to have you back to talk about that. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. All right, gang, click on that link below. This is amazing stuff. This is the fuel of the parallel economy. Make one a syngasifier, one of yours. You're going to absolutely love it. Click on that link below right now. Francisco, God bless you. Thanks so much for being Thank with you, us. Thank you, my brother.